We're back, Kirsty. Am I back? Back in the land of We're home. <laughs> back in the land of home. That's right, there's Kirst. Hello, babe. Hello. You, you look fine. I'm huh? tired. I'm looking as buggered as a bear here, guys. <laughs> we are back. We arrived today back from Australia. We've just been two weeks in Australia, Kirst and I. Uh, kicking ass, taking names, having the time of our life. Honestly, one of the best trips of our lives. Massive shout out to Pete and Joe. Um, Birch, dirty Birchy, you know what I'm saying? Kirsty's just watching our live stream on her phone here. So every view, well. every view um, counts. <laughs> and uh, no, 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 and a massive shout out to Dirty Birchy and Mrs. Dirty Birchy from uh, Criticam on YouTube. Check them out and on Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. We had a great time. VHS Expo. Vicky T sent us yeah, a super chat, eh? Hey? Vicky T, thank you so much. She, she said, said she's going to be online. She said, oh, I've lost it. Huh? Dingo, said, you're my hero. Hi, Dingo and Christy. Yeah. Hopefully you had a good time. Great time, Vix. Um, so it's not going to be a long live stream tonight. I just want to touch base with you. I'm really dumb for setting up a live stream for tonight. Huh? I thought you were rather ambitious. Bloody hell. I felt good this morning. I'm wrecked, guys. We're wrecked. <laughs> right now, the time in Australia where we were, I couldn't wait that night time. <laughs> <laughs> it's five in the morning. So... Technically, we, we, we've skipped a night's sleep. <laughs> yeah, it's five in the morning, we, we, we'd be a reverse in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I am going to pull out a deadly snake to show you. And I've got some stuff I want to tell you guys. Uh, update on Brian Barczyk as well. That's all coming up. Yes, my brother. Laura Wilcox. Laura. Look at my coffee, bro. $50. Oh, $50. Hey, oh, no, Love you guys. Love you too, Law. Um, this coffee is better kick in. Sometime soon. I just took some painkillers too. I got sick on the plane ride back. I had such a sore throat. Felt like, a, I don't know, coals were inside of it. Like I'd swallowed glass. So uh, it was a long bloody flight. And normally Australia is quite a quick trip. It's 12 hours. But we flew from Sydney to Perth, which is 5 hours. Flipping a huge country. And then we parked in the airport for 7 hours. And then we got on the plane for 12 hours. We arrived in Joburg last night for like 9 o'clock. Got to accommodation at 10 o'clock. Slept there, woke up early this morning. Pew, 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 flew down to Durban. Baby, baby, we're home. Whoop, whoop. So Nick from Wicked Wildlife says it's 5 a.m. Biscuit, how are you, buddy? Um, you're not confusing me about Australia, Nick, besides you Aussies. Is um, that you guys don't all listen to daylight savings. Some people do, some people don't. It's like every city you go to is a different time. It's weird. Great to meet Nick at the at the expo too. I was super impressed with that VHS expo, okay? Kurt? Oh, Adam's online. Adam, is he online? Yeah. Jesus gets woke you up early. Good. <laughs> I'm glad I can get you guys out of bed early, although Adam is an early writer. Um, it was, uh, what did you think of the expo? It was amazing. Hey? It, it was, was incredible. Hot. Hot. <laughs> hot. It was really, really good. I was looking a little bit better than this, hey, Adam? But, I must be honest with you guys, the team there, mm. Shams Elise, Bay Marie, you're the biscuits, you're the, the balls on a bull, the, the, the real deal. <laughs> um, we've got two super chats, Adda, uh, Drew, Drew Adams, Drew, hi, bro. Uh, from our volunteer program sent us $5, there isn't a message, oh, I'll look out for that. I'm just going to throw a snake in this direction, <laughs> and he's a great guy, Drew. Louise Leonard sent us Louise, eight Aussie dollars, hey Dingo and family, love you guys so much, hope everyone is well, are you back from Australia oh, already? Are early, eh? Yo, they're early rises. Hey, guys are up the crack of dawn, not crack of noon, like the Americans, they crack of noon kind of people. So um, it was, honestly, I was surprised. So we went over there and Australia's cool. And, and my expectation was like, it's going to be here. It's cool. It was, if I had an arm, I could move it. So it Pew. was here. <laughs> it was right up there. Mm. We met great people. We had a great time. The snakes, there's some videos coming up, guys. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. I tangled with the top three Tang most toxic. Tangled or wrangled? I tangled almost too. <laughs> with the top three most deadly venomous snakes on the planet. Inland Taipan, which we've got here, you know. Eastern Brown, number two. I've got three Easterns I worked with. And guys, I was impressed. I was super impressed with the Easterns. Like, cheers. Good one. <laughs> and Coastal Taipan, number three. I saw Coastal Taipan headbutt somebody, head, headbutt somebody in the chest. How's that? 
right in front of us. I thought he was being tagged, but he hadn't been tagged. So um, let me, without further ado, I'll come back to my coffee now. Um, so those of you joining us late, when I say I'm jet lagged, it's five in the morning where I come from. <laughs> and uh, I'm bugging, I haven't slept. And when I don't sleep on a plane, and we've had the kids, we've, it's been so good to see our kids. I know our kids are watching and you should be in bed. It's okay. Mwah. <laughs> so good to see the kids again. But um, when you travel, you miss your own animals. You've got my children now. Uh, them too. But I, I missed our snakes, you know. Mm. And uh, it's so good to be back here, see some of them. I've got some changes I want to make with some of them. Look over here, though. I haven't touched a mamba in two weeks. <laughs> hey? Nothing withdrawals. The mamba king is back. Boom, shaka -laka boom. Look at the snake, guys. Mm. Isn't that beautiful? And it's weird, Kirst, to be around an arboreal snake again. Look, it's not Aussies. It's not, it's not slipping off the hook. It's climbing. It's sitting there. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Mm. Look at it. I'm going to climb out towards you. Well, I haven't missed that. There we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah, you haven't missed me making climb out towards camera. Check it, he's just got my I wrist. I just never so focus. Off. Check how he's got my wrist. Mm. I'm in a bit of trouble there, actually. Just go there, so you go forward, snake. Check my wrist. Just want to undo that. There we go. Now you can come play with that. Come play with that, huh? So, um, I need to tell you guys about what's been going on. Australia, whenever we travel, it's really, really good for us. Uh, it helps me just get out of the daily grind of what's going on here. And it uh, helps me get like a fresh perspective, meeting great people, seeing great places. So obviously one of the highlights for us, we went to Australia Zoo. It's been a 25-year-old dream of mine to go to Australia Zoo. Super intimidating in some ways because it is the most beautiful zoo I've ever seen in my life. Mm. Chris? Yeah. It's just, I mean, I know Steve-O had a bit of crown, a bit of cash that he put into there, but it is magnificent. I'm trying to steal for free. Cameron, Cameron, if you're watching, <laughs> the guy who does the rock work there, Cameron, you're, you've got a gift, my bro. You've got a gift from God, because that rock work is the most stunning rock work I've ever seen in my life. Trees and dark, oh, crocodiles, everything made out of rock. It's beautiful. This guy's a real wrist holder on that. Look here. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, hey, stop your nonsense. Go play out there with Kirsty. <laughs> so, um, Australia Zoo is a massive highlight. We were going to meet Bob Irwin. And that fell apart because Bob's wife got sick, unfortunately, the day before we were going to um, meet him. So I was, I was a bit upset about that. Not like upset like have a tantrum. Just it would have been awesome to meet Bob. But how's this for a special highlight? It wasn't planned before we went. On Friday night, Kirsty and I have got to spend two and a half hours odd with Wes Mannion. Uh, Wes was the Australia Zoo Director for over 20 years. He was involved with the zoo for 36 years, and he was Steve Irwin's best mate. So uh, we had dinner on Friday night, and Wes, like, I don't know other people that have, have had that. And he, he was tired. He'd been working in the bush the whole week, climbing trees. He does great work with um, building nest boxes and stuff for Australian uh, animals that have lost their homes because of deforestation. And he had climbed 300 trees that week, driven 10 hours that morning, and then still had dinner with us mm. until like, I don't know, it was like two and a half hours he spent with us. And uh, that conversation was some of the most, and that's what I want to talk a bit about tonight, is some of the stuff I've got out of it, but some of the most valuable conversation I've ever had in our lives. Kirst? It was very... For me, it just yeah. ticked every box, because Wes, has, Wes ran that zoo. Wes helped build that zoo. You know, after Steve went, Wes was the man who was in charge of that zoo, and over 600 staff. So he, when it comes to building facilities, state of the art, breaking the barriers and stuff like that, Wes is the biscuit. And he's excellent at handling snakes. And he's a really good guy. Yeah. Plus, um, there's not many people who knew Steve before Crocodile Hunter. And uh, we were sharing stories of like stuff we do, stuff he did, you know, before there was Crocodile Hunter. Before there was all of that stuff, and it was honestly, it was just beautiful. Um, like the hardest part was either me or him keeping quiet for three minutes so, or three seconds so <laughs> we could hear the other one talk. It was just it was hey, awesome, yeah. Kirst just popped it up. How these wallies? Yeah, you loved it, huh? That was really cool. Yeah, he was kind of, I mean, he didn't know us from a bar of soap and he gave us so much time. No, it was incredible. That was awesome. Um, 
And then uh, he says, I must come back over to Australia. We're going to go catch some snakes together. So, and I said, come do, do it here in Africa too, bro. We've got a place to stay here. So we're going to do that. Speaking of that, volunteer program, July and August. We're opening bookings tomorrow. That's right. We start the bookings tomorrow, the volunteer program. We are limiting numbers. If you want to join us, you have to send an email. Don't, don't DM me. Don't <laughs> send smoke signals. I'm not going to get them. It's bookings at dingowild.com. D-I-N-G-O-W-I-L-D.com. Bookings at dingowild.com. We'll send you all the info, guys. It's not free. Yeah, come here and take up weeks of stuff and we host you and put you in in our accommodation and that for free. I mean, how does your brain work? Do you go into a burger joint, eat the burger for free? No, obviously not. Um, but we'll send you all the information and stuff like that. It's probably the cheapest volunteer program I've seen anywhere in Africa. The most important thing about it is you're gonna get hands on. Uh, you're gonna to touch animals that the zookeepers, that's what I've learned on this trip. Zookeepers around the world aren't about touching the stuff that you guys get to touch and work with and, and be a part of. Um, so that's really, really special. And you've got something there for me, Kirsten. Mm. I'm going to go into what the point of this video is all about. Um, a super chat from Angel Harold saying, I just Hello, saw Angel. Brian's vlog with the mail that you sent him. You're so sweet. Much love from Kelly. I must actually go and check it. And she said, my heart breaks him so much. My dream is to meet him. So, so let me tell you guys first. Let me talk to you about Brian. And then um, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to talk to you. I'm just trying to check out something. I'm trying to see actually what the title of this live stream is. Who's yours? Yeah, I forgot what I titled it. This is where jet lag kicks your balls. <laughs> what is the point? That was, I, knew, I knew what it's about. Just couldn't remember what I called it. What is the point? I'm going to get into that in a moment. So I'm going to take out another mom, but just now too, I've missed him so much. But um, I was on the phone to Brian today, and uh, I've been communicating with Brian probably every day, if not every second day. Um, since he first went into hospital a couple of weeks back and uh, my heart bleeds for him. He is, I consider him family. We, we love him to bits. Um, like our kids, when they heard the news um, before he had put it on their videos, um, they heard, uh, we told them what was going on, they just burst into tears. Um, even my little guy Rex here, yeah, he's we, little. we spoke to him about some stuff over video that you can check the tears coming because Brian is such a special guy and he's He's the real deal. There's not a lot of real deals out there. There's not a lot of guys who, the guy you see on camera is actually the guy in real life. And he is hospitable, he is warm, he is generous, mm. he is passionate about animals. Positive. He's positive. Sweet Mother McCree, he's positive. Bloody oath, as the Aussies would say, he's positive. And uh, he, we care about him so, so much. Like, he is such a special friend. And I, my dream would be to suck that cancer out of him and stick it into some other people that I know. <laughs> That's a good thing I'm not God. Okay. <laughs> it's a good thing for the whole world. But you, you just take that out and just, oh, you could have a dose, bang! You could have a dose, bang! Because it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. And um, so I'm not gonna, I don't know how much he's updated, how much he hasn't, but um, his treatment starts this week. So please support the guy, send him messages. There's a, Facebook group um, that Kevin McCurdy has started. Uh, do you remember the name? I can look for it. Also, Stay Strong for Brian Barczyk or something like that. Um, I've it's just slipped my mind now, but go check it out. Kev would have advertised on his Instagram as well. And uh, join it, and it's for a place to put, not memories, because Brian's still with us, but it's to put appreciation. And people have been putting messages there, Brian, I'm keeping snakes because of you. And he's made a massive impact. Supporting Brian. Oh, there's two. Let me, let me show you which I one think it it's is. Stay Strong. Stay Strong Brian Barczyk. There we go. It's that one there. Stay Strong Brian Barczyk. That's what it is. So look back here, my back, because you're looking at this guy. And um, so go and give him some love, please, guys. He's a really special guy. And as somebody who knows him, he is honestly, he's one of the good guys. He really is magnificent. Um, so that's on the whole Brian front. Um, we are going to be at Animal Con this year. Spoke to him about that today. So we're coming in to support it. It's going off the charts this year, and that's in honor of Brian, too. Because Brian started Animal Con, it's been his dream, you know. So, um, anyway, you can support Brian, please do. He is 
a good guy, I consider him family. He was meant to be coming here in a month's time and we are going to handle black marbles together. <laughs> oh, it's so hot to see my eyes are sweating. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, that's been pretty crappy news to be honest, but anyway. And then, um, the point of tonight though, um, what is the point? What is the point of what we do when we are traveling overseas? I love having time to kind of reflect and look at things and, and just have a bit of head space from the daily grind where you can look at stuff and you can re kind of define why you're doing what you're doing. And uh, one of the things that I've had to consider a lot is most of the stuff we do, like now, just whipped out a green mamba, I'll bring out a black tail Jameson mamba in a moment. Um, I shouldn't be handing venomous snakes when we are as tired. A lot of people are like, oh, you're tired, you're sick, you don't touch snakes. We don't have that luxury. We have to do it almost every day. And um, there's times where I've been like, what happens if I get bitten, I'm allergic, kids, all of that stuff. You know, something that weighs on me pretty heavily, believe it or not. And um, one of the things I said to Wes when I sat down with Wes, Wes has given his whole life to what we do. He's lost his best friend to what we do. He's raised Steve's kids um, as much as he could, you know, as like a surrogate father, along with Terry for um, the last however many years. He's lost a lot. I said, Wes, is it worth it? All the sacrifices, all the pain, all the, is it worth it? And he looked at and he actually knew I was asking that before I even asked him. And he said, 100% absolutely and I said to him would Steve have found it worth it he said 100 percent and um and for me he said something which kind of resonated with me he said he was talking about Steve he says Steve was on a mission and and then just that little phrase did something inside of me so for us guys we I've said for years now we are not YouTubers or Instagrammers or social media influencers. I do not give a stuff about this camera. I do not give a stuff about, oh, look, this person's following us. Or, oh, this is happening. Oh, look at me. Look what I ate for breakfast. Check my muffin. Egg neck muffin. <laughs> or, what I did show you my coffee just now, but that's different. Like, I don't, I don't show you animals because I need a prop to try and get my mug on your TV or on your phone or whatever it is. I don't care about my mug being on your phone. I'll show you animals because I'm passionate about them. And over the last two to three years, it's been tough for a lot of us out there with COVID and a whole bunch of other stuff. We've had COVID, floods, riots. I bust my arm. My arm is still, that's what I've got. So when I'm handling Eastern Browns, I'm handling Mambas and stuff, I've got such limited mobility in my left arm, which is my arm I tail with. Then when I bend down to grab it by the tail, sometimes my arm doesn't ex Kirsty laughs at me, not that I'm grabbing snakes. <laughs> I try to reach out and I go to there and I can't reach further because of my shoulder at the moment. So that was really hard. We lost the YouTube channel a year ago. Um, last month was a year ago, I think. It's been some tough times. And what can happen when the tough times come, and, and it's normal for us, is we kind of just take a step back. And we forget why we're doing what we're doing. And we get caught up in, oh, so we better pay the bills. Not bad stuff. What happens if I die on my family? Uh, it's all good stuff. You have to pay the bills. You must think about your family. Um, my family mean everything to me in life. They're the most important thing to me. More important than my mission of, of doing stuff. But what this trip brought home to me is that I'm the best person I can be. I'm the happiest person I can be. When I'm going 100 miles an hour, flat out, into the face of whatever's coming, when I, when I am fulfilling the mission, I've been put on this earth to fulfill. And for me and my family, that is getting people to fall in love with animals. And I don't care what animal it is. It could be a beautiful echidna, which is the cutest little spiky thing in Australia. <laughs> it could be a deadly black mamba. It could be a rhino. It could be a whatever. And most of the time when I talk about these animals, I get quite tearful because that's how much we care about these animals. That's how much I am gripped by passion for them. Let me show you. Rather than tell you, let me show you. Um, I want to show you this thing. This is a bit of a handful, this one. 
but I want to show you him anyway. He's a black tail gym. Let me get his girlfriend. She's less of a handful. She's very pretty. Come here, my girl. Come here, Julie. I just said you're nice and relaxed. You just behave now with the wrong part of you. <laughs> this is like, you can't even see what's on the sun. You grab me, you want okay, There we go. Look, here. Look at it. Look. Look. She's a little bit fired up. Calm down. Just climb, climb, climb. That's what you do. Look at the snake. How amazing is this? Now, what I want to show you, look at the tail. Can you see how, look at that. Look how it changes it. From black to dish thing. Isn't it amazing? Now, my point I'm trying to make is what I love doing with my life. And the reason we risk our lives, the reason I bring out a deadly venomous snake when I'm allergic to it. Like a lot of people say, Dingo, you're allergic to snakes, but why do you still work with deadly venomous snakes? It's because I love the snake. It's because I want you to see it like I see it. Some people, most people, see mambas as these killers. They just want to kill you all the time. That's not the case. This snake is phenomenal. It is one of the best climbing snakes in all the world. Look at that head. Just bring a little bit of a hood. Be a bit carefully. Look at it. Look at that face. You can't look at that face and not see intelligence. You can't look at that face and not be like, oh my gosh, look how slender it is. Look how beautiful it climbs. Look at that. How's that snake, guys? Look at it. Look at it. Come on. Come on, Cletus. Look at that. That's just beautiful climbing. Come on, you have to look at the again. It's like crocodile feet. They're just phenomenal. How's that? Can you, I mean, imagine your bum looked like that. <laughs> your bum's ugly, probably furry. This guy has got a bum that's got, oh, let me climb it. He's got different colors in it. Yeah, 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 look at his bum now. Look at that. Look at this color up here. Black to yellow to green. That's how amazing these snakes are. You about to lose it, but. So the point I'm trying to make is, is our mission, our purpose, our whatever you want to call it, our calling is, um, for me and my family to introduce people who don't like snakes, who don't like uh, animals, who are eating pangolin soup, who are eating shark fin soup, is to introduce people like that to animals like this. It's to get somebody to understand, you know what? Maybe I don't need to eat shark fin soup. I can eat chicken soup, because it actually tastes better probably, and I'll leave the sharks alone. That's what we're passionate about. And that's why we do. That's the point of this channel. That's the point of our Instagram. That's the point of our school shows we do. It's the point. That's the point of everything we do. I wake up early in the mornings, guys. Um, I know Instagram life looks amazing. It looks like, whoa, you just live the life. It's all excellent. And it is. We've got a great life. But there are so many sacrifices when you're working with animals. When you're putting your life out in the public domain, there are a lot of sacrifices that people don't understand. It's all worth it because we care about these things. I'm desperate to take you on a journey where you can see pangolin and you can understand. Most of you are like, what the hell's a pangolin? <laughs> oh, so yeah, that's a cute thing. It's the most trafficked mammal in the world. And we are involved with a reserve that takes poached pangolin that have been rescued from poachers and re-releases them back out into the wild. We've walked with pangolin. We've raised money on, the, on our old channel for pangolin. How amazing is that? And that's what G's me up. That's what's like, I'm feeling sick, but let me do a live stream tonight. It's because of that. I want you guys to see animals through our eyes. We've got, we got the best lives ever. And we want you to have the opportunity to kind of come on an adventure with us and to see it with us. That's the point of this channel. It's the point of every single thing we do. Our, our team, while we were away this last week, I was proud of them. They did three school shows. Why do we do school shows? Do you know what it's like doing a school show? <laughs> Some schools, um, are we going to a school this next week or the week after? I can't remember which week. There are 975 kids in this school. A low-income rural school. These kids, when I see a snake, are going to freak out. That's what we're trying to do. Those are the people we're trying to reach. We're trying to get them to fall in love with snakes or to appreciate it or to fall in love with a bunny. I don't care what they fall in love with, but I want them to, to kind of get moved, be changed 
after our shows. That's what it's all about. Yes, my brother. Uh, Laura sent you a sticker saying, thanks for being you for $20. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Laura. I'm just getting my coffee. Because it's cold now. <laughs> so, um, it's ice coffee. And that was really one of the best things about our trip over there. Is it, it, it reminded me why we do what we do. Because in, in running a business and trying to, f taking a, a hobby and making it into your livelihood, it can get really tricky sometimes and there's a lot of pressure on. And sometimes, and some of you might have done this, sometimes you feel like, oh, are we making a difference? Wow, I just need to get a video out. I need to clean the poo. I need to drive somewhere. I, it becomes about that stuff. And you forget your mission behind it. You forget your purpose behind it. You forget the reason you're doing what you're doing. And uh, we are very, very fortunate that we can do our purpose and our mission and our calling on this earth. We can do it 24-7. We've, we've got our kids are, are homeschooled. We hired a teacher to teach them so that they could travel with us in so lot of places. So that we're going through it today. Kids and I were talking about it. They've dehorned rhino. They've moved lion. They've... Um, touched a zebra. Touched a zebra. Touched elephant. Uh, it, like the stuff they've done is just ridiculous. King cobras, black mama. They've done it all. And uh, the privilege that they've got, the privilege we've got to do this, is something that I'll never, ever take for granted, hopefully. And I appreciate it because there's a lot of you guys who are supporting us and make it possible. But um, my point I'm trying to make is this is why we do everything that we do, whether it's a school show, whether it's this video, whether it's Facebook, it's to try and get animals to stand out to people, try to get people to build a connection with animals. And these days when people have got uh, video games or I don't know what you call them, online gaming, mm -hmm. and you've got Netflix and you've got all this flash stuff right in your face all the time, you have to stand out. It can be difficult. So that's why hey, I'll take the risk of a black mamba trying to thump me full of venom. Or I'll take the risk of bringing out a green mamba now because I'll get through that oh, I'm going to go play a video game or I'm going to go and call somebody or <laughs> I'm going to sit on my iPad wasting my life. No, 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 no. I want people to see the animals, to fall in love with them and to change something, guys. So I don't know what your thoughts are about it. Put your comments down below if you want. But that's where we're going. I'm going to sleep tonight. I'm going to wake up tomorrow. And we're going to come in hot. And I am revigorated. I am fired up. I am more focused than ever before. And it's going to be either join us or get the hell out of the way because we're coming in hot, blowing out snot. <laughs> and um, looking really forward to the rest of the year. Got Savannah and Danny and Kevin, Donny, and a guy Josh joining us uh, in a month's time from America. Doing some great stuff actually, lion work, rhino work, doing some elephant stuff, pangolin stuff, hippo stuff. We're doing all of that. And um, then I'm going to the SOS Expo also in a month's time with some of those guys. So end of April up in Johannesburg. It's the big South African Reptile Expo. So I'm going to be there in a month's time. Come and see us. Come and say hello if you're in South Africa. Uh, make the trip up to Joburg. It's, it's our biggest expo we have here. And uh, then we've got a volunteer program July, August. Then we're going over Animal Con in September. It's going to be a busy year. We're going to be cracking it, hey, Kirst? Mm. Cracking Good it. Good stuff there. Smashing. Kicking <coughs> off and taking names. Uh, if you are from Australia and uh, you want to come over peter birch is organizing a group of guys to come over here too numbers will be limited on that as well so uh, send us an email to bookings at dingowild.com and say you're part of birchie's group or you want to um come here for a volunteer program it's two different tours yes my dad um a wicked wildlife Next. sent us 30 aussie dollars oh thank you bro saying so spot on your vhs speech covered it perfectly it's way deeper and the social media people see on the surface it's about the mission and putting it in people's hearts it's it was a great reminder on why we do what we do thank you buddy I that's appreciate awesome that. because nick he does videos as well guys check out his channel and uh he does educational things with kids all the time and mm. goes to public places takes animals and it's about getting animals in people's hearts so that's what it's like that's where we're going to end it off and uh we'll see you soon guys remember the links down below for merch yeah someone was rubbish. asking about your shirt this is one with a hole, too. I've got another hole here. Another one. <laughs> I've got a, a Parenti's monitor. I ripped the whole oh, thing yeah. with a Toyota logo in Australia. Hang on, tell them a lot. 
Do you know, I only got bitten by one uh, snake in Oz. Which one was it? It was a flipping carpet python. Oh, yeah. I got it so well. <laughs> like, a lot of snakes wanted to bite me. And I convinced them not to. Yeah, was, I was very impressed. Oh, thank you, me too. <laughs> and then this carpet path, python just smashed me on the arm. Check my arm though. Can you see any marks here? Oh, uh, yes, I can. Parentes, laces, all kinds of stuff. I've got a lot of scratches. I look like Only a that arm. No, because this is because this arm's too weak to hold them up. Oh. So I'm holding up the monitor. It's like, yeah, I look like I'm a cutter. Huh? I don't know if you can say that. I just do. I love that. Wonderful night. That's where we're going to end it, guys. Send love to Brian, please. Mm -hmm. Go and support him. So he's a, he's a flipping walking legend. Uh, we'll see.